discussion about how the charges are transferred from one body to other by induction. So if we now take two objects which have let's say similar type of charges, what exactly is the force that is going to exist between them? We will see that like we have two objects which are similarly charged, they are going to repel each other. That basically exists in the case of charges. Not necessarily for the case of gravitation though. In the case of charges, you have two similar types of objects which are going to repel each other. Similarly, oppositely charged objects are going to attract each other. So we are trying, we are going to devise a rule that is going to be known as the Coulomb's rule, which will tell us as to what exactly is the force that exists between any two charged objects irrespective of the size and the shape. So, please be tuned in. So students, as we discussed about the production of charges by induction, charging by induction. Now supposing we do have two charged objects, then what is going to be the amount of force that one charged object is going to exert on the other. So that kind of a force that one charged object exerts on the other is defined by what is known as the electric force. Mind you, we are still talking about that with the charges being at rest. We are not talking about charges in motion. Right? So that is what is known as electrostatic force, I should be precise enough. So according to this, what we understand is talking about the Coulomb's law. So what, what exactly is the Coulomb's law? According to the Coulomb's law, what we have, the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges at rest is directly proportional to the product of the charges. That is, if you have force so, and you are given two charges, so F is going to be proportional to Q1, it's going to be proportional to Q2 and it's going to be inversely proportional to the distance square. This has been experimentally found that it is going to be inversely proportional to distance square, okay? Because if you take the charges close together, obviously the force is going to increase. If you take the charges away from each other, the force is going to decrease. Therefore, it has to be inversely related to the power of distance. And experimentally, by finding out what is the potential energy and all that things, you find out that the force is inversely related to the distance square. So you'll get F is proportional to Q1, Q2 upon R square. So this is how the forces are going to be related to each other. And therefore, this particular thing is what is defined as the Coulomb's law. Now Coulomb's law, as we have already understood that when you have two charges, as of now, we haven't defined the quality of the, that two charges. You can have two similar charges. If you have similar charges, they are going to repel each other, right? If you have opposite charges, they are going to attract each other, as you can see on your right hand side, bottom corner of the screen. So opposite charges, they are going to attract. Same charges, they are going to repel, right? Now, moving on, supposing you have multiple charges. You have a system. Obviously, you cannot say that there is just going to be one single charge. There is going to be a possibility that there are multiple charges that are present. If you have multiple charges that are present, in that case, how would you find out the net force? The way to find out the net force is what is known as the superposition principle. So according to this, you, what you do, you try to find out the force on any particular charge by summing up over all the forces that exist on that particular charge. So for many charges, the force on any particular single charge is nothing but the vector sum of all the charges that are there. So that is, understand here, if I say that, how do we figure out the field due to several point charges? So what you do, you consider one charge at a time. You find out what is the force field there, produced by each charge. You add them up and that gives you the net value of the force. So let's try to do an example to understand more about it. Um, yeah. So supposing if you say that if you are required to find out the force on this particular charge, I think it's not visible. So supposing we are required to find out the force on this particular charge. So calculate the force from 7 microcoulomb charge. Similarly, calculate the force from minus 3.5 microcoulomb charge. You are only required to add the vector quantities that you are going to get. Supposing now you just have a this thing. So if you just try to mark it along this particular direction, 
So you just place your scale such that you know how much is the distance that is being produced. Obviously, when you have the positive charge, they are going to repel and the negative charge is going to attract, right? So what we'll do as a result, so from the positive charge, there is going to be a force of repulsion that is going to be produced. So if you try to understand, so this distance is equal to 5 meters, the vertical distance is equal to 4 meters that we have here and this particular distance is equal to 5 meters and as a result what we are going to get the force if 7 if you want to find out that is between 2 and 7 plus 2 and plus 7 this is going to the, be the amount of force why because if you find it out the value of k the value of k is given as 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 so the value of k is known to you 1 Micro coulomb is equal to 10 to the power minus 6. So you have these two. So we have 9 into 10 to the power 9, 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 is this, and 7 into 10 to the power minus 6 is this. Divide by 25 because the distance between the two charges is equal to 5. So if you simplify, 9 times 2 is going to be 18, 18 times 7 is going to be 126. 126 divided by 25 is going to be around 5.04. So that comes out to be around 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 newtons. In a similar manner, if you try to find out the net force that is going to exist between these two, there is going to be a force of attraction that you are going to get. So if you try to find out that, again, since this being an equilateral triangle, so you'll have, rest everything remains the same, this charge on which you are trying to find out, 3.5 is the, because we are trying to find out the magnitude as of now. So this comes out to be around 2.5 to 10 to the power minus 3 newtons. But we have to take care of the directions now. So we are, now what we are going to do is best to decompose that into x and y directions. So as you can see, what we have done here, we have just decomposed this particular force into the vertical direction and the horizontal direction. So that breaks it up. So we'll get f7x is equal to f7 cos theta and similarly f7y is going to be f7 sin theta. In a similar manner, because these are similar triangles, so we can find out the value of sine theta and cos theta because ultimately you are going to take the ratio. So F7x comes out to be this and similarly F7y comes out to be this. Now you try to decompose the values of F3x and F3y. So you break it up into its components. As a result, the net force that you are going to get is let's say this. This is as a result of combination vector addition of F7 and F3. Now what you are going to do, you have the x components of both the forces, similarly you have the y components of both the forces. You add up the x components and similarly you add up the y components. Once you do it, you will get the net value of fx and fy. So how you are going to find out the resultant? Just using the Pythagoras theorem, so you square up the values here and square up this, add them up and take a square root of that. So this is going to give you the net result. Please understand. We have used the superposition principle, but if you just use the superposition principle blindly, you will see that you cannot solve it because the forces would be in all possible directions. You have to find out the unit vectors along those directions. Solving that it that way is not going to be easy. So it's always better take the components, take the vector components, add them up, add the vectors along those particular directions, and then you find out the net resultant. That's going to be much easier. If you say that how will I find out the angle, the net result, it's very easy because fx is known to you, fy is known to you. So if you just draw a triangle like this and let's say the net angle is equal to alpha. So fy is going to be here, fx is going to be here. So what it means that tan alpha is going to be equal to fy divided by fx. Therefore, the value of alpha is going to come out to be equal to tan inverse of fy divided by fx. So this, if you do it, because you know the value of fy, the magnitude of fy, you know the value of fx, take the tan inverse of that, that's going to give you the net value of the angle. So this is how you find out the angle. So you know the magnitude, you know the angle, so that solves your purpose. Hope you enjoy it. So students, we learned that when you have two charges, and when they are at rest, there is going to be a force which is defined as a Coulomb's law. The Coulomb's law tells us about as to what exactly is the force that exists between those two charges. But supposing you have multiple charges, as we discussed, we need to use the superposition rule to find out the net force 
because of all those charges, all those discrete charges at a particular point. Therefore, we take the components of the charges and that tells us as to what exactly is the net force. Now, since we have understood as to what exactly is the force due to any combination of charges, how do we understand how much is the force influenced by a particular amount of charge? Let's discuss that in our next topic which is the electric field.